everyone, and welcome to a new edition of Hockey 101, brought to you by Chevrolet. I'm Kelly Sacco, joined alongside Steve Goldstein, and here we are in the seats at the BB&T Center. It is a game day, so the players are on the ice for morning skate. And guys, if you're coming out to a Panthers home game here at the BB&T Center, you're going to be sitting right here with us. And if you're a new fan, you may not know how exactly the best way is to watch a game. Some fans may think they have to follow the puck the whole time. However, there are so many other things developing on the ice. So, Goldie, tell us, what's the best way to follow a game as a fan? You know, it's interesting. The, the natural reaction is you're going to follow the puck. You know, and for people that are new to hockey, same way, you know, you follow the ball, whether it's basketball or baseball or football. But there's a lot that goes on besides uh, who has the puck. There's, there's hitting that could go on and behind the play. So if someone gets checked, you may want to see how that guy gets up. Uh, there's goaltenders that you can look and see how they react after the play leaves the zone. There's always a ton going on on the bench between players talking and coaches talking and, you know, coaches making line changes. One of the questions a lot of people always have is how do they know when to go on and off the ice? It's, you know, their, their coaches are barking the instructions on the bench. So it's a very fast game, so it's not that easy if you're not watching the puck because you could miss something. So my recommendation is if you're watching the game, you want to stay with that puck most of the time. But when the puck is not in the offensive zone, you know, they just shoot it down the ice and you kind of have a – maybe a five-second break where maybe a defenseman is just going back to get the puck and the other team is changing players, that's your time to go look at that bench, see how they change, maybe look in behind the play to see who's jumping on the ice. Maybe there's a player streaking towards the opposing net and there could be a breakaway possibility. But when that puck is close in around the net and the offensive team has it, you got to watch that puck at that point because you may miss a goal. So as a fan, you know where to look, but you're calling the games from the highest perspective. We're here pretty close to the ice. You are all the way up above all us. All the way. <laughs> so how is it different watching the game as a broadcaster opposed to watching the game as a fan? Yeah, it's a whole different, uh, whole different animal, really. First off, there's a little cheating. I'll let everybody in with the broadcasting. We have monitors in the booth. Now, I don't call the live action off monitor. Um, you know, some announcers do. I don't. There'll be certain times where if there's a scramble in around the net and, you know, it's just like a sea of bodies and from we are up there, it's hard to see the puck sometimes underneath these guys. That's when I may take a look at the monitor to get a closer look because the camera will, will be, you know, in tight on what's going on there. Um, you know, I've watched those benches a lot. I, I wait for those line changes. And, and, and similar to as, you know, the recommendation for fans, when the puck kind of gets shot down the ice, that's when you know you have at least you know, a four to five second little break where someone's going to go back and get the puck or the goalie's going to play the puck, um, where you can kind of take a look and see if there's a player breaking towards, you know, for a breakaway, can that defenseman make that long stretch pass to spring the guy free? What's going on down there on the bench? Maybe somebody just taken a big hit or gotten hurt on the shift before. You want to see that guy go to the bench, see if he goes to the bench, see if he goes into the locker room. Um, so I'm always looking at those things. But when the offensive team, you know, has that puck and they're on the move for scoring chances, yeah, you're watching that puck, watching that game, see if they score. Because ultimately, so much goes on in the game. But as a broadcaster, the one thing you can't miss, you can't miss goals. You cannot miss goals. Nope. And you can't miss the puck either. Do you have binoculars or something while you're up there? You just got really good vision. I, I don't have binoculars. <laughs> you know, it's funny because you know, every once in a while somebody gets, you know, comes up to the press box, whether it's for a tour, you know, they do uh, – you know, auction these off at charity events where people get a behind-the-scenes look, and we get that a lot. Of How do you see all this from way up here? And I wish I had a better answer for you. <laughs> I, I don't. It's corny. It's what I've always wanted to do since I'm a little kid. And for some reason, from up there, I'm able to pretty much see everything. I don't know why. So the things we learned in Hockey 101 today are where to look on the ice and that this guy has really good vision. So, guys, make sure to tune in. Watch Steve Goldstein on Fox Sports Florida. That'll do it for this edition of Hockey 101. I'm Kelly Sacco. That's Steve Goldstein. We'll see you next time.